here's the puck, the mechanism of the puck phonograph. As you can see, it's in exceptional order for 105 years of age. There's a little brake here to stop the motor when it's running. The brake's fairly useless because the spring will only run to one cylinder. Can we get it going? There we are. Notice there, there's a little piece of string that moves the mandrel. That's all it is. A little piece of string goes in between that pulley and the mandrel and it's twisted because it runs backwards. I'll slow it down so you can see. So as the governor is turning that way, the cylinder is going in the opposite... Oh, the brake came off. The cylinder is going in the opposite direction. There you go, that's how the brake works. It's very simple. It just stops the mechanism like that. So I wind it up. And wind it all the way up. This will play one two minute cylinder per winding. There you go. We'll pop it down over here and I'll show you how to put the rest of it together while that's running. We take the horn support and that gets pushed into all of that, like so. And that sits in there and that's the horn taken care of. The reproducer only just slides in there like that. And that's all that takes. So we'll just put that on the side for a moment. Let's pick a record here. This is one of the new cylinders available from the Vulcan Cylinder Record Company in England. This is the New York Military Band playing the Smiler Egg. So this is an old Edison recording, probably from about 1903, which they've reissued. To play the cylinder, you've wound it up, you've obviously released the brake, and she's running, and then you just carefully push it, put it onto the record. Now remember, there's no feed screw in a puck. Like a normal cylinder machine, that will go across whether there's a record on or not. On a puck, they don't. The puck uses the groove to carry the whole um, reproducer assembly across. One thing you should know at the end, you better be prepared to catch it because there's nothing to catch that at the end of the record. So when you're getting near the end, just get ready to grab it. So I'll be ready to catch it. Let's see how that was going to fly off there. That's all you need to know. If the string ever needs replacing, that's a really simple job. And I literally, when I restrung this, I just used string that came from... Um, uh, big W or somewhere like that. All it is, I'll just stop that so you can see it, the string goes over this pulley here, loops across that thing like that, and goes around the mandrel. And then when you've got it, you can see I've just cut off, cut off the edges of the string there to make it, uh, to make it play smoothly. 1905 technology and it still sounds great. I do generally tend to let the machine run down at the end so that the spring will completely unwind, it won't come out. I rather use that than just stopping it like that. And the only reason being I don't like leaving springs under tension overnight or for a long time if I don't play it for a day or two or whatever like that. There's a permanent point in there, you don't ever have to replace the stylus, it's a permanent one there and pretty much I think that's all I can tell you. As you can see, the horn has been repainted. I bought this from a dealer in New York when I was last there. And, you know, it's in, it's in pretty fine condition, the whole machine. I'll give you a closer look at all the mechanicals. I have set it in terms of speed and regulation. Uh, I have perfect pitch. I'm a musician. So I've set it against my own cylinders that I've made because I've made cylinders for this Vulcan company in England. Uh, and I know, of course, what the pitch of those records should be, so I have set it to that, and you should never have any problem with it. It's a very simple little machine. It took about 10 minutes to replace the bit of string. Uh, it's a bit fiddly, but um, just getting your fingers in there, I had to take this little top thing off just to get into that. But that's pr pretty much it.